Imagine you are James Bond. Not Ian Fleming's fictional character, the spy, but rather U.S. Navy Wing Commander James Bond, or Jim, Stockdale. It is 1965, the 9th of September to be precise. Jets completed their strike with the loss of one American plane. Piloting an A-4 Skyhawk high above North Vietnamese jungle, his plane suddenly is in a flak trap. Hit by enemy artillery, flames ignite, control system unresponsive, only option, eject. Parachute into a small village below. No heroes welcome, but a merciless beating by enemy's forces. This was the reality that he faced. While plummeting to earth behind enemy lines, Jim whispered to himself, Five years down there at least, I'm leaving the world of technology and entering the world of Pectitus. And for the next seven and a half years, Jim Stockdale was held captive. In Holo prison, the infamous Hanoi Hilton. Brutally tortured, deprived of basic human rights, and denied proper medical care for his severely damaged leg. Other prisoners incurred broken bones, broken teeth, and eardrums, dislocated limbs, starvation, food contaminated with human and animal feces, and a variety of tropical diseases. It was no Hilton. As a POW, Jim had three options for survival. Cooperate with the captors, survive, but be a traitor violating his military training and code of conduct. Escape. Success was slim and penalty severe. Or, third, drawing from his military training and understanding of stoicism, Jim chose to resist and maintain his military identity and honor. In fact, he created and enforced a code of contact for his fellow prisoners known as Back Us Code. Back Us. With each letter representing a tenant. B, for be prepared to give only name, rank, service number, and date of birth. A, accept no favors from the enemy. C, code of conduct. You must remember it. K. Keep faith with your fellow prisoners. U. U.S. government will take every lawful means to secure your release. And S. S is for self-discipline and positive attitude. The Back Us Code helped the POWs cope with inhumane conditions. It instilled a sense of unity and resilience, helping them survive. The code became a symbol of the prisoners' resistance and their determination to survive despite the odds. The torture worsened. In the summer of 1969, Stockdale was locked in leg irons in a small, filthy bath stall and beaten repeatedly. Jim disfigured himself with a razor to avoid being used by the enemy for propaganda and paraded in public. He beat himself with a stool until his face was swollen beyond recognition. Jim remained unbroken. Years later, he affirmed, it was only when I lay there on the rotting prison straw that I sensed within myself the first stirrings of good. Gradually it was disclosed to me that the line separating good and evil passes not between the states, nor between the social classes, nor between political parties but right through every human heart, through all human hearts. And that is why I turn back to the years of my imprisonment and say, sometimes, to the astonishment of those about me, bless you, prison, for having been a part of my life. Bless you, prison, for having been a part of my life. Stockdale credited Stoicism with saving his life, and when asked which prisoners didn't make it out of Vietnam, he quickly replied, Oh, that's easy. The optimists. Oh, they were the ones who said, We're going to be out by Christmas. And Christmas came, and Christmas went. Then they said, We're going to be out by Easter. And Easter would come, and Easter would go. And then Thanksgiving, and then it would be Christmas again. And they died of a broken heart. This is a very important lesson. You must never confuse faith that you will prevail in the end, which you can never afford to lose with the discipline to confront the most brutal facts of your current reality, whatever they may be. This phenomenon, it is known as the Stockdale Paradox. The idea that in order to overcome a difficult situation, one must confront and accept the brutal realities of their current situation, while also maintaining unwavering faith and hoping for a positive outcome in the end. Jim Stockdale's leadership was not a blind belief in a rescue. No, the time was not fixed, hope was never lost, harsh realities accepted while maintaining an unwavering belief in ultimately prevailing. It in fact is about balancing realism with optimism and never losing faith despite the challenges. As Marcus Aurelius wrote, the art of living is more like wrestling than dancing. And as much as it is, too demands a firm and watchful stance, a firm and watchful stance against any unexpected onset. Life is full of challenges and unexpected obstacles. We must maintain a strong and vigilant mindset in order to face them. We should not be complacent or passive in the face of difficulty, but rather approach challenges with a firm and watchful stance, much like a wrestler in a ring. Think of a sumo wrestler. First thing you see them do is plant their feet, shake down, root themselves into that mat. Stockdale was released as a prisoner of war on February 12, 1973 during Operation Homecoming. 
Jim Stockdale's story teaches us that even in the darkest of times, we have the power to maintain dignity, to stay true to ourselves and never lose hope in the face of adversity, and to never sacrifice our values. And on March 4th, 1976, Stockdale received the Medal of Honor.